the right. Guys, look what I've managed to get my hands on. The FX Wildcat. Hi guys, this is Rack and Load. This is the FX Wildcat. And this is your Rack and Load review of this little beauty. Now, it's almost perfect. In my eyes, and my opinion. So, first of all, before we jump in this with this uh, detailed Rack and Load review, uh, let's just throw out some specs on this thing. So, well, first of all, this one is in .22. You can get it in 177 or 25 caliber. Okay, it's got a 230 cc um, air reservoir on it. Uh, fully regulated. The length, uh, slightly different lengths with different calibers. The 177 version and the 22 version are both 760 millimeters full length. Um, the 0.25 caliber one is slightly longer at 890 milli millimeters. When I can say it, uh, I'll put that in the details in uh, metric and um, imperial for you, uh, just for you American. Uh, guys because I know you don't like us uh, the way we work in metric o over here in the UK um, yeah like I said uh, 177, 22 and 25 are available um, this is the 0.22 version you've got 11 millimeter dovetail um, rail on it side, le side lever cocking 8 shot mag capacity shrouded muzzle uh, and that's pretty much it in the 2.2 version. Uh, I've not got a weight by the way guys, I'll put that in the details or I'll, I'll annotate it in the actual video. Can't seem to get a weight and I've, I've not got a sort of a scale that will give me an accurate um, weight to this one. So I will find that out guys and I will put it in the details of the video. Um, like I said, yeah, this is a almost perfect rifle. By the way, in 2.2 you're looking at almost... 200 shots. Well, just over 200 shots you're going to get out of this thing on one fill, which is pretty damn cool. So, right, where do we begin with this thing then? Right, accuracy. Let's jump in with accuracy. And yeah, this is where I embarrass myself and this is where people jump in the comments and say, Rack and Load, you can't shoot for sugar. So, um, I'm not the greatest shot, I admit that, and I always say that in my videos, I'm not some world class sniper. So anyway, this is at 30 yards, right, shooting off a bench, a little bit windy, um, eh, listen to the excuses coming out already. These targets aren't the best by the way, they're sort of tear a little bit, I need the cardboard targets, I've run out of and got these paper ones, they're a bit crap. Um, yeah, RWS Super Domes, um, yeah, yeah, it's alright for me, I'm happy with that. They were probably, out of all the uh, pellets I've tried, I've tried three different flavour pellets, uh, they were the RWS Super Domes, uh, next ones were H&N Field Target Trophy, a little bit better grouping, I uh, don't know, some were going alright, That's. I think that's me. I am going to blame me. I will eat that humble pie and blame me. A uh, little bit better on there, the grouping. Uh, probably should have just zeroed this rifle a little bit better. Um, whatever. 30 yards though, that's a kill for me. You know, I'm happy with that. Um, like, I mean, yeah, they were going to the side a little bit. Uh, maybe just wanted a little bit more windage. But anyway, yeah, so that's the Acupels, pretty cool, H&N Field Target Trophy, pretty cool, pretty much likes all flavour pellets, well, the, the popular three that I tried anyway. 
So, right then, let's get underway with this, get into some detail then. So, take it from the stock end as ever. Fairly hard um, plastic recoil pad or butt pad. I don't know, I, that'd be nice if it was a bit softer. It has got like this bit of a grip effect going on. Um, mm, I don't know, I just, I'm not keen on that. They could have done a better job of that, in my opinion. The stock though is fully synthetic. It is a ballpup version as you can see. Um, so all the loading stuff is pretty much um, behind the trigger. Um, side lever, um, as you can see. But anyway, we're talking about a stock. Pretty cool design stock. It kind of reminds me a little bit of the Alien Pulse Rifle, the way this thing is. Don't know, do you think that? I do. <laughs> but yeah, pretty cool. Um, nice, sort of soft to the touch as well. Um, like all the FXs, all the new FXs, it's the same, pretty much the same material uh, that they're using in like the Bobcat and stuff like that. Like a nice grippy, almost rubberized um, synthetic stock, so really nice, really nice. And it's nice, not too wide, not too sort of thin at the, um, at the fore end. Uh, the pistol grip really nice really comfortable you've got like these finger uh, scallops uh, scallops whatever you want to call them indents um, fits pretty much you know I've not got the biggest hands and it fits mine all right pretty cool very comfortable as well real comfortable to shoot but if you're a left-hander like myself it ain't that comfortable to shoot and this is the one thing that bugs me with this rifle. Now, everyone's probably switched the video off now because I'm talking left-handed. <laughs> well, a few of you are probably still tuned in. But this is my suggestion to FX, right? They've got a full uh, ambidextrous stock here, right? This bit, cheek piece, is just for you righties. And that is where the magazine goes in here like that okay so if you're a lefty you're basically putting your cheek on the magazine not good not good why didn't they and this is my suggestion to FX why didn't they completely round that all the way so it was you know pretty much symmetrical all the way around like that and incorporate some sort of magazine drop in from the top so you could shoot this left or right handed. I can put up with the cocking lever on this side. I can put up with that. But it would be nice if they could have just, I don't know, maybe if, they, if you're watching FX, could you do that? Is that doable? Just make that completely ambidextrous and just somehow have that magazine drop in from the top. And that's not going to affect left or right handed shooters. Just a suggestion. May not work, but... That's my suggestion anyway. So yeah, that would be nice because the stock is fully ambidextrous. Pity the action ain't in a nutshell. Now the magazines on this rifle are great. Absolutely great. I love these simple magazines where you just push the pellet in. I am not a big fan of these ones that FX do for some of their rifles where you need like a PhD just to figure out how to load the things. Uh, not a big fan of them, to be honest. Um, but that's just me. I just like these simple magazines. Dead easy to load. You know, really cool. Uh, held in with like these ball bearings. Now, what I did find as well, while we're talking about magazines, with the uh, H&N Field Target Trophy, for some reason, I'd load these, uh, load the magazine up with some of those pellets, obviously load it into the rifle, and on about the third or fourth shot, the magazine would just pop out of the rifle. It'd just like shoot out of the rifle. Dead weird. Uh, I think I've got a bit of footage as well where it was squashing the pellets. Just been having some issues with H&N Field Target Trophy. Magazine keeps popping out and it's mangling pellets as it engages the magazine 
bit weird. Interesting though. So, although it shot accurately with those pellets, didn't really like feeding them. So, uh, don't know, just bear that in mind. Uh, I didn't really sort of push my luck with that. You know, I didn't want to sort of damage the rifle because this rifle is on loan. Um, but it was it was weird. The magazine was just popping out. Um, you know, sort of dead weird. But anyway, that was just with H&M um, field target trophy pellets. Now I'll just show you how you load this rifle. Uh, pretty, you know, self-explanatory with the side levers. Obviously, cock the uh, lever all the way back. Um, obviously, fill your magazine up with pellets. Make sure you got it the right way around, and it just literally pushes in, pops in, oh, it was off camera then, let me just do that again, pops in, like so, and that is it, and you just give the mag a bit of a turn to sort of engage it, you'll know if it's not engaged because the side lever won't shut, and that is it, you're good to go, that thing is cocked, obviously it's empty, it's in a safe direction, I'll just fire that off. And then, when you cock it, turns that mag. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant, nice and simple. But like I was saying, if you're left-handed, your cheek is gonna be on that. Bit of a pain, but anyway. But yeah, absolutely superb magazines. Love, love, love simple magazines on air rifles. Cannot stress that enough. Now, while we've got it like this, let's talk about the trigger. Now, the trigger on this gun, like on all FXs, is amazing. Straight out of the box. Fully adjustable as well. It's a match grade trigger. Um, you've got like a steel uh, trigger guard there. Plenty of room to do all your adjustments and stuff and set the trigger up how you want it. Straight out of the box, uh, pretty damn good. I'll just get the trigger pull gauge and show you what it's doing. Okay, so let's just cock that. See what this is doing straight out of the box. One pound, 3.9 ounces, straight out of the box. That is pretty damn cool. Sweet trigger. The cocking lever on the Wildcat is really quite chunky, feels really solid. Uh, I love the handle, it feels like you know it's built to last, it really does. Myself, uh, I don't know, would you want to go any bigger as far as the handle goes? If it was me, I'd probably want that handle a little bit bigger. Um, just you know, if you're shooting with gloves on. Uh, probably just make it a little bit bigger. That's just my preference, but no, nothing wrong with the uh, cocking lever on this rifle. It seems really tough. Uh, don't think you'll have any problems there, or at least you shouldn't do anyway. And this bar here is basically how it all happens. Uh, obviously you've got um, all your bits and pieces in here. I'm not gonna go into too much detail, guys, because, you know, um, we don't wanna get all scientific and geeky on this thing <laughs> but that is it pretty much that's the bar that sort of cycles the magazine and obviously uh, regulates the air and all the bits and bobs stuff but it's a nice setup it looks really cool it's it's nice how they've done it nice and elegant like I said just be nice if it's full and be dexterous that's my main gripe that is my main gripe on this one, by the way, um, if we want to talk about power, there's no power settings on this. Like on some of the FXs where you can adjust the power, you have three power settings. The Wildcat hasn't got it, so uh, you're just pretty much running at uh, full power with this rifle. Obviously in the UK, the legal limit is 12 foot pounds, but if you get one of these on FS FAC, Firearm certificate, uh, you're going to be pretty much rocking, but I think with this, the 2.2, you know, running at UK legal limit, 
200 shots plus per fill, you are pretty much rocking. Now to mount your optic you have got this lovely chunky milled bit of aluminium that is basically mounted on top of the barrel. Uh, really cool the way they've done that, I love that. Really does look cool. And you've got an 11mm dovetail there so you can mount whatever optic you want. By the way on here is a Hawk Endurance uh, 4 to 4 to 12 I think it is. Oh, let me just double check. I forgot what it is. <laughs> uh, sorry, 1 to 4 times 24 Hawk Endurance sitting on top. That is a cool scope. Really cool. I, if you watch uh, my videos guys, you'll know I'm a big fan of Hawk. Uh, but this thing, I don't know, really worked well on this rifle in testing. Um, you know, not great for sort of low light conditions obviously um, but for what I was using it for pretty cool and you know it sort of kept the weight down a nice sort of little scope like this uh, but yeah Hawk Endurance 1 to 4 times 24 um, check them out they are cool really cool love <coughs> the endurances moving along the rest of the rifle then to the barrel now obviously the barrel is quite a bit longer than what you think it is because this is a bullpup so the barrel is starting here where the magazine is so this is your full length of barrel all the way along and it is this last sort of portion here is shrouded and you will not need a silencer or a moderator on this rifle because this shroud has pretty much got a fully incorporated uh, moderator or silencer on it and the way you can sort of demonstrate that is basically unscrewing this on the end and firing it without this in. Now I'll dry fire it with, you know, obviously no pellets in, let's just crock it. Now I don't know whether you'll pick up the sound difference on this, but this is without this end bit on. Now when you look down the barrel, by the way, uh, it is a bit of a shroud there, look, if you can see. Try and catch the light. Got a few inches of shroud there before the barrel. So let's fire it without that on. That is really quite loud. And then obviously it'd probably be a little bit louder when it's actually pushing a pellet through there as well. Let's screw that on. Again, this is not really a scientific test guys because it haven't it's not loaded with pellets. So let's try that without. Sorry, with the uh, thing in the end of the barrel. Totally different, totally different. So you will not need a silencer for this rifle. Trust me, you will not need it. Now the safety catch is a simple manual safety catch, but there's one thing I don't like about it. Now, when I first did this, I was like, oh, I think I broke it. I thought I'd snap this, uh, this safety catch, but Obviously it works like that, on and off, but if you push it too hard, it actually turns as well. Um, interesting. So I'm not overly keen on that. Don't think it's supposed to do that, but that just feels a little bit, I don't know, a bit of quality control there, FX. I think you maybe will want to have a look at the safety catch because, you know, that don't feel good when it sort of turns as well, you know, because it just seems like it's just a bent bit of wire. Don't know, but <laughs> at first when I pushed that, I thought, <gasps> I've snapped it, but no, it was just turning, but a bit weird, but uh, I'd want that sorting, to be honest, but anyway. That's the safety catch, like I said, nice and simple, um, you know, simple safety catch, manual safety catch. Um, no auto safety catch on this, so you haven't got to worry about this thing coming on every time you cock it or anything stupid like that. As far as safety catches go, uh, I'm a big fan of cross bolt safeties, but that's just me. The barrel, by the way, guys, has got FX's smooth twist, so that basically means the barrel has no rifling up until the last few inches where you've got the rifling at the end of the barrel basically. So smooth bore, 
to the last section and then you've got the rifle in. It's supposed to make um, the pellet obviously more accurate uh, as it travels out the muzzle. Um, whether it does or not, I'm sure it does, you know, I'm sure FX have put a lot of money into researching that. Um, but yeah, it's cool, it's got the smooth twist, um, very accurate rifle, way more accurate than what I am, you know, I just sort of ruin it by showing you guys my targets that I've shot. Um, but yeah, a very accurate rifle, um, worthy of decent glass, that's all I'll say, so get a decent scope on top of it. Love or hate the Hawks, I love them, you know, value for money, uh, especially when you're putting down quite a bit of money on a rifle like this. I think these are running at about seven or eight hundred, uh, the FX's. Uh, I'll annotate that in the details. I'll put a link as well where you can get these rifles from, um, but just an awesome rifle. So I'll show you the manual. And I'll show you FX's brochure as well because it's pretty much the same. Now these manuals for FX is really cool but they never really sort of specify uh, the actual model. They're pretty much a universal to all of FX's. They tell you everything for every sort of rifle they do pretty much. So, um, But they are top, top manuals. Colour photographs, nice and clear. Um, you know, can't fault them at all. But like I said, it goes into pretty much everything you need to know um, for basically knowing how to use all of FX's models. And you've got like all the accessories and stuff at the back, the manual. So the manual is cool. I'll just show you a brochure. Now I've not got an up-to-date brochure. This is a fairly old one, but it's not, I've not actually got the Wildcat in, but it does show you uh, some of the other models that FX do. Something for everyone really. But really cool. I love the FX's. Absolutely love them. Uh, reviewed one or two of them now. Um, check the playlist. Uh, check over the videos on the channel You know, if you want to watch any more rack and load reviews of FX rifles. There's one or two in there. Uh, you also are supplied with, in the box, obviously the filler adapter, so that goes without saying. So that is it then guys, that is the FX Wildcat. Uh, I really do love this thing. God, just look at the size of that cylinder there. Look at it. Jesus. It's like the full length of the rifle almost. Pretty cool though, really cool rifle. Uh, like I say, be nice if it was fully ambidextrous, just this bit. Not bothered so much about the cocking lever. I'm not used to using right-handed bolts and cocking levers and stuff. Just make it a bit better for the lefty. You've got a fully ambidextrous stock. Just make that cheek piece fully ambidextrous as well and have that mag drop in from the top, if possible. But anyway guys, that is the FX Wildcat. That is your rack and load review. As ever, thanks for watching. Stay tuned, stay subscribed. Just rack and load. See ya.